In this video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step beginner tutorial on how to create and set up a new Trust Wallet as an extension on your browser. Trust Wallet is a self-custody hot wallet where you can store a variety of different cryptocurrency across several different networks. You can also store Bitcoin inside a Trust Wallet as well. Trust Wallet can also connect and interact with decentralized applications across Web3. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a new wallet, how to back up your secret recovery phrase, and how to add or remove different crypto tokens inside of the wallet. Then I'll explain gas fees and how to transfer crypto into Trust Wallet. After that, I'll show you where to go to buy crypto using fiat and how to swap one crypto into another. From there, I'll show you how to connect and disconnect Trust Wallet to decentralized applications. Lastly, I'll show you how to send crypto out of Trust Wallet to an exchange or another wallet address. All of that and more with some tips and tricks along the way. This video is not financial advice. This video is for educational purposes only. Always do your own research before ever using a self-custody hot wallet, including Trust Wallet. I also left you some timestamps in the description down below, so at any point, feel free to skip ahead to a section that might be most relevant to you. Aside from that, don't forget to leave me a like and hit subscribe for future content. Let's get into the video. To get Trust Wallet and use it as an extension on your browser, head on over to TrustWallet.com and I'll leave a link for this in the description of this video as well as in the pinned comment down below. Once you're on TrustWallet.com, you can click right here where it says Download Extension. And as you can see, Trust Wallet can be downloaded as an extension on Chrome, Brave, Opera, and Edge. For this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating with Chrome, but simply click on the browser that you wish to add Trust Wallet as an extension to. Then on this page here, we'll come up here, top right hand side, and click where it says Add to Chrome. And then we'll click here on Add Extension. Now I've added Trust Wallet as an extension to my Chrome browser. If you don't see it pinned to your browser up here, top right hand side, just simply click on this puzzle piece in this drop down menu. We'll click on the pin next to Trust Wallet. Now you can see the icon for Trust Wallet pinned to my browser, top right hand side here. Here's where you'll find three options. You can create a new wallet, you can import or recover a wallet, or you can connect a ledger device to Trust Wallet. So if you're trying to recover your wallet and you have your seed phrase, you just click on this option right here and then you would import your wallet. For this tutorial, I'll be focusing on creating a new wallet. So when you're ready to create your new wallet, just click right here. Next, you'll have to come up with a password for your wallet and this password will be used to unlock your wallet. So come up with a good password, meet all their requirements, and of course, give their terms of service a read through. If everything looks good to you, you'd check this box right here and then you'd click on next. Then Trust Wallet will be asking you for your permission to help improve their wallet. I personally opt out of these kinds of things, so for me, I'm going to come down here and just click on no thanks. Then on this page here, you can choose to set Trust Wallet as your default wallet. You can see in my case here, that's currently toggled to on. I don't want Trust Wallet set as my default wallet, so I'm going to go ahead and just toggle this off. And then come right down here and click on open wallet. Then you'll get this little pop-up window here with a couple tips on how to access dApps with Trust Wallet, but I'll be covering that in this tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and click here on Got It. Then I'm going to click on I'm ready to use Trust Wallet. Now you'll have created your new Trust Wallet. And the first thing I'll show you how to do is how to toggle the theme into dark mode. And to get that done, just come right down here and click where it says Settings. Then on this page here, click right here where it says color mode. Then on this page, just simply click right here where it says dark. So certainly choose a color theme that works best for you. For the duration of this tutorial, I'll be using dark mode. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the back button a couple times here and get us back to the wallet here. Now I'll show you how you can get Trust Wallet in and out of full screen mode. You'll notice that Trust Wallet can be opened up in its own browser. So to close this, we can click on this little X right here. And if we want to get Trust Wallet back into full screen, we just come up here, top right hand side, click on the Trust Wallet icon. The wallet will drop down, then click here on these three little dots, then click here on full screen. And that's how you can get Trust Wallet in and out of full screen mode. One of the first things you want to do with your Trust Wallet is back up your secret recovery phrase. This phrase is a master key to your wallet. So you can use this phrase in the future to recover your wallet, but you can also use this phrase to install Trust Wallet on several different devices, including mobile app. You're going to want to write this phrase down and keep it somewhere safe. Don't let anyone get their hands on this. 
If anybody else gets a hold of your secret recovery phrase, they'll have access to your wallet and all the funds inside it. And a quick tip with this, Trust Wallet will never ask you for your secret recovery phrase. So don't get fished, don't give this out to anybody. Some people get their recovery phrase ingrained on a metal card. That way, even if there's a fire, the phrase doesn't get destroyed. Whatever you decide to do is up to you. To back up your secret recovery phrase, you'll see a call to action at the top of the screen right here. So go ahead and just give that a click. Then to see your secret recovery phrase, you'd come down here and you'd click on show. Next, you'll have to put in your password that you came up with when you were installing the wallet. Then click on submit. Now you'll be able to see your 12 word secret recovery phrase. So write these words down in order as you see them on your screen, double check the spelling, make sure that's all correct, and then click on proceed. Then on this step here, you'll need to confirm your secret recovery phrase. So choose the words in order as they were presented to you on the step prior to this. And you can do that by simply clicking on the words down below. Once you entered in the words in correct order, just come down here and click on next. And now your secret recovery phrase is backed up. So make sure to write it down, keep it safe, and don't let anyone get their hands on that. Now, if for whatever reason you lose your secret recovery phrase, there is a way to view it inside your wallet, but you'll only be able to do this if you have access to the wallet. So to see your secret recovery phrase, you'd come down here, click on settings. Then click right here where it says view secret phrase. Then you'll have to put in your wallet's password and then click on reveal. Then you'd click right here on show. Then you'll be able to see your secret recovery phrase. But once again, you'll only be able to do this if you still have access to the wallet. To add or remove crypto tokens to your trust wallet, what we'll do is we'll scroll all the way down here to the bottom and you'll see down here where it says manage crypto. So just go ahead and give that a click. Then on this page here, we can toggle on and off the crypto that we wish to have displayed inside Trust Wallet by simply using these buttons over here on the right hand side. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of these off. Let's go ahead and click on the button beside the crypto that we wish to toggle on or off, just like so. We'll go through all of these. Now when I click on the back button up here, top left hand side, you'll see that I have no cryptos added inside my Trust Wallet. Now I can go ahead and add the crypto that I wish to have displayed inside the Trust Wallet. Not only can I add the crypto token, but I can also add the crypto token for the network that I wish to store it on inside the wallet. And this is going to help keep the wallet looking more clean and organized. Personally, I don't need to see a bunch of zero balances on tokens that I do not intend to store inside the wallet. If that changes in the future, I just simply add the token back. So to add some tokens to the wallet, I'm gonna come down here and click where it says manage crypto. Now we can use these buttons to turn on the crypto that I wish to store inside the wallet. So let's go ahead and do Bitcoin down below here. So I'm gonna click on this button right here next to Bitcoin. Now, if we come back at the top, you can see that that button's turned on. And alternatively, we can always search for the name of the token in the search bar up above. So let's go ahead and do Ethereum. I can see Ethereum right up here at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this button right here. Now you can see that bumped Ethereum up to the top and the green button is highlighted next to Ethereum. Now you can see that I've added Bitcoin as well as Ethereum to Trust Wallet. Trust Wallet also supports several different networks. And some of these networks are less in gas fees and faster than others, especially than the Ethereum mainnet. So in the future, if you're going to be swapping any crypto, or if you're going to be connecting your Trust Wallet to a decentralized application, or simply sending tokens out of Trust Wallet to another exchange or wallet address, you'll often save on gas fees by simply using a different network, especially a different network than the Ethereum mainnet. I find the Ethereum mainnet to be the most expensive, at least at the time of making this video. More on gas fees shortly. We can see right here that I've already added Ethereum for the Ethereum mainnet to Trust Wallet. But as I mentioned before, the Ethereum network is quite expensive in gas fees. So let's go ahead and add Ethereum to Trust Wallet for a less expensive network. So I'll come back up here to the search bar and I'll just type in the ticker symbol for Ethereum, which is ETH. Now all the results are being displayed down below. And below each one of these results, you'll be able to see the network name. So if we come down here, we can see ETH on Optimism. We can also see ETH on Arbitrum and so on. Now the Optimism network is a layer two on Ethereum and so is the Arbitrum network. 
So often you can use those networks to save a lot on gas fees when you're sending tokens out of the wallet or interacting with a decentralized application. So let's go ahead and add Ethereum for the Arbitrum network by just simply clicking on this button. Now, when I come up to the top, I can see that I've added Ethereum for Arbitrum as well as the Ethereum mainnet. And let's go ahead and do one more. This time I'll just do Chainlink just for the purposes of demonstration. Now I can see all the Chainlink results down below. And I can see Chainlink is compatible with the Arbitrum network right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this button right here. And now I've added Chainlink to my trust wallet for the Arbitrum network. Now, if you don't see the network for the crypto that you wish to add to Trust Wallet, you could always try a coin registry such as CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko. And I'll leave a link to those sites in the description down below for anyone that might find that helpful. For this demonstration, I'll use CoinMarketCap and I'll quickly bring it into frame. Now that I'm on CoinMarketCap, I can come up here top right hand side and use the search feature to search for the crypto that I wish to add to Trust Wallet. So for this demonstration, I'll keep it nice and simple and let's go ahead and do Tether. So I'm just going to start typing in Tether, just like so. I can see a result right here, so I'll go ahead and give that a click. And now I'm on Tether's page inside of CoinMarketCap. From here, we'll come over here on the left-hand side, and you'll see a section that says Contracts. And here's where you'll find all the different contract addresses that the crypto is compatible with. To see all of those, just hover over this where it says More. Then you'll get a drop-down menu with all the different networks the crypto is compatible on. So for this demonstration, I'll go ahead and add Tether to the Arbitrum 1 network. So I'm going to scroll down until I see the Arbitrum network. I can see it right here. And to copy this contract address, I'm going to go ahead and click on these two little boxes right here. Now I'll bring Trust Wallet back into frame. And I'm going to paste that contract address into this box here. So let's go ahead and delete Chainlink. Right click, paste. And as you can see, a result has come up for USDT on the Arbitrum network. So to add that, I'll simply click right here. And now I've added USDT for the Arbitrum network to Trust Wallet. Now, if you use this method and you paste the contract address into this box right here and no results come up down below, that likely simply means that Trust Wallet hasn't integrated support for that crypto on that specific network. The crypto itself could be compatible on that network, but perhaps Trust Wallet hasn't integrated it into their wallet just yet. I'll also mention that you won't always find the crypto's contract address on CoinMarketCap. If that happens, try CoinGecko. And sometimes you won't find it on CoinGecko, but you will find it on CoinMarketCap. If you can't find the contract address on either of those registries, it could mean that the crypto isn't compatible with the network that you're looking to add inside a trust wallet. Or you'll have to go to that crypto's official website and retrieve the information from there. If you exhaust all those options, you still can't find it. It likely simply means the crypto isn't compatible on that network. So now when I click the back button right here, and now you can see the crypto as well as the networks I added to Trust Wallet. You can see I have Ethereum right here for the Arbitrum network, but you can also see I added Ethereum for the Ethereum mainnet as well. In the future, if you want to send crypto out of your trust wallet or swap one crypto into another or interact with a decentralized application, you'll need to pay gas fees for those transactions. And gas fees are paid out of the native crypto of the network that you wish to use. So in my case here, you can see that I've added Chainlink as well as Tether to my trust wallet for the Arbitrum network. The native token for the Arbitrum network is Ethereum. And that's because Arbitrum is a layer two on Ethereum. So if I had any Chainlink or Tether inside my trust wallet and I wanted to send it from my trust wallet to an exchange or a different wallet address, I would have to pay the gas fees from my Ethereum balance inside my trust wallet on the Arbitrum network. If I wanted to swap some Chainlink into Tether, same thing, the gas fee would be paid out of my Ethereum balance that I store inside my trust wallet on the Arbitrum network. If I was using a different network like the Binance network, the native token is BNB. That means I'd have to have some BNB inside my trust wallet on the Binance chain in order to cover gas fees for any transactions on that network. And I'll be demonstrating all of this in this tutorial. For now, just keep that in the back of your mind. And if you come right up here and give this icon a click, you'll be able to see all the different networks that Trust Wallet currently supports. 
And as I mentioned before, some of these networks are less in gas fees than others. At the time of recording, I find that the Ethereum mainnet is one of the more expensive networks. Now, a lot of crypto is compatible across several different networks, such as the stablecoin Tether or the stablecoin USDC. So if you want to store a crypto that's compatible with several different networks inside your trust wallet, you might want to consider using a network that's less in gas fees than Ethereum, such as the Arbitrum 1 network. And that's why I added Chainlink and USDT to the Arbitrum network inside my trust wallet. That way, in the future, when I'm sending those tokens out of my wallet or swapping them, I'm going to pay less in gas fees than if I stored them on the Ethereum mainnet. In other cases, some crypto might only be compatible with a specific network, so you won't have any choice but to store that crypto inside your trust wallet with the network that it's compatible with. But always do your own research and make sure that you trust the network that you wish to use inside your trust wallet. And also keep in mind that you'll have to store some of that network's native token inside your trust wallet so that you can cover the gas fees when using that network from your wallet. And if you need to know what the native token is for any networks, you can just come right up here, click on networks, you'll find the network name, and you can do a quick Google search to find out the native token for each network. But for Avalanche right here, AVAX would be your native token. The native token for base is Ethereum. If we scroll down, you can see Ethereum right here. So obviously ETH is the native token for Ethereum. Scroll down a bit further here, you can see Optimism, that's a layer two for Ethereum, just like Arbitrum. So the native token for Optimism is Ethereum. Matic is the native token for Polygon. You can see the Binance Smart Chain right here. So BNB is the native token for that chain. And down here at the bottom, you can see Solana. So Sol is obviously the native token for Solana. But a quick Google search and you can find out what the native token is for the network that you wish to use. Now I'll show you how you can send some crypto into your trust wallet. And I'll demonstrate by sending crypto from a crypto exchange and into this trust wallet. And I'll go ahead and just use Mexi for this demonstration. So I'll bring Mexi into frame like so. And if anyone's interested in learning more about the Mexi platform, I do have some tutorials for it. So I'll be sure to leave a link for those videos in the description down below for anyone that might be interested. So now that I'm on the homepage of Mexi, I'm looking for the crypto withdrawal button. On some exchanges like Coinbase, it's a send and receive button, and on Kraken, it's called a transfer button. And a lot of the time, you'll find it top right hand side of the screen. So if I just come up here, hover over wallets, I can already see a withdraw button right here. In a lot of cases, you'll also find a withdraw button on the dashboard of the exchange that you're looking to withdraw the crypto from. So I'll go ahead and click right here on spot. Now, as you can see here on the spot dashboard, there's a withdraw button right here. And there's also a withdraw button next to each of the cryptos listed down below here. And a lot of exchanges look very similar to this. It does look different on Coinbase and it does look different on Kraken. But at the end of the day, you're looking for the crypto withdrawal form. You want to choose the crypto you wish to send to your trust wallet. And you want to select the correct network that you wish to receive the crypto inside your trust wallet. You don't want to send from one network and into another, or that can result in a loss of your crypto. More on that shortly. So I'll go ahead and just click right here on withdraw. And now I'm on the crypto withdrawal form. From here, you wanna choose the crypto that you wish to withdraw off the exchange and send into your trust wallet by clicking on this box right here. Then you should get some kind of drop down menu like this that you can choose the crypto or you can search for one in the search bar up above. I have a tiny bit of Ethereum here, so I'll go ahead and demonstrate with that. So I'm gonna click right here on Ethereum. Next, we need to retrieve the trust wallet address for the crypto that we wish to receive inside a trust wallet and then we need to paste that address right here. So what we can do from here is come up to the top right hand side and click on the trust wallet icon like so. The wallet will drop down and simply click on the crypto as well as the network that you wish to receive it on. So you can see in my case here, I have Ethereum available on the Arbitrum 1 network, but you can also see that I have Ethereum on the Ethereum mainnet. Now the Arbitrum 1 network is a layer two on Ethereum, so the gas fees are much less. So I'll use that option. So I'm gonna click on Ethereum for the Arbitrum network. Next, we'll click right here where it says receive. Then Trust Wallet will be showing you a QR code. So if you're doing this process from your phone, you can always scan that QR code to get this done. But right below that QR code is where you'll find your deposit address for that crypto as well as the network. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that deposit address by clicking on these two little boxes right here. Now I'm going to come back over here to the crypto withdrawal form on Mexi, and I'm going to paste that address into this box here, just like so. 
Next, I need to choose the correct network by clicking on the network box right here. And now I'm getting a pop-up window showing me all the different networks that are available on MEXC. On some exchanges, you'll get a drop-down menu showing you all the available networks that you're able to use. Now, in my case here, I need to choose the Arbitrum 1 network by giving it a click. Now, if you don't see the network that you're looking for, it could simply mean that the exchange doesn't support the network that you're looking to use, at least for the time being. So now that I've chosen the correct network, I need to come down here to the amount box and choose how much Ethereum I wish to withdraw from MEXC and send into Trust Wallet. And usually you'll be able to see your available balance somewhere near this box. So in my case, it's right here. So I can always type in a custom amount if I wish, just like so. Or if you wish to withdraw your entire balance, you just click right here on Select All. Once you have your withdrawal set up the way that you want it, you just come down here and click on Submit. Now my Ethereum's on its way from MEXC and into my Trust Wallet on the Arbitrum network. So I'll just go ahead and close this out and I'll bring Trust Wallet back into frame in full screen mode. And as you can see, the Ethereum has already arrived inside of my Trust Wallet on the Arbitrum network. And in this case, that took less than 20 seconds. Sometimes it can take longer. It just depends on how congested the network is. And here's a quick tip with this. If it's your first time sending any crypto into your Trust Wallet, just send a small amount first. Once the smaller amount arrives as you intended, you can have the confidence that you have everything set up correctly and then you can send in larger amounts. And I'll do one more quick demonstration and this time I'll send some Tether into my Trust Wallet for the Arbitrum network. So I'll go ahead and bring Mexi back into frame. Now that I'm back on Mexi, I'm going to come up here, top right hand side, hover over wallets and I'll click here on withdraw. Now I'm back on the crypto withdrawal form. I can see that Tether's already selected, so that looks good to me. So I'm going to come up here, top right hand side, click on the Trust Wallet icon. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on Tether for the Arbitrum network. Then I'm going to click right here on Receive. Then I'm going to copy my deposit address for Tether on the Arbitrum network by clicking on these two little boxes just like so. Then I'm going to come back over here to the Withdrawal form. And I'm going to paste that into Address just like so. Next, I'm going to choose the Arbitrum network by clicking on this box right here. Then scrolling down, I can see Arbitrum 1 here, so I'll go ahead and give that a click. And then I'm going to come down here and choose the amount of Tether that I wish to withdraw from MEXC and send into Trust Wallet. And I'll go ahead and just click on Select All. Then click on Submit. Now that I've done my security confirmations, the Tether's on its way from MEXC into Trust Wallet on the Arbitrum network. So I'll go ahead and close this out. And I'll bring Trust Wallet back into frame in full screen mode. And the Tether has arrived. And you can see it right here up at the top. Here's where to go if you want to buy some crypto using Fiat through Trust Wallet. To get this done, we'll click right here on Buy and Sell. And if you're using the drop down version of the wallet, just come up to the Trust Wallet icon, give it a click. You'll find Buy and Sell right here. So let's go ahead and click on that. On this page here, choose the fiat currency you wish to spend by clicking right here. Then select your currency from this drop down menu or just simply search for it in the search bar up above. I'll go ahead and leave this on USD and close this window out. Next, choose the crypto you wish to purchase by clicking right here. And the easiest way to do this is just search for the crypto you wish to buy in the search bar up above. I'll demonstrate with Tether. Now I can see all the different networks that I can receive my Tether on. So make sure to choose the network that you wish to receive your crypto after making your purchase. So if I wanted to receive Tether on the Optimism network, I would choose this option right here. And if I wanted to receive Tether on the Arbitrum network, I'd select this option right here. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll select Tether for the Arbitrum 1 network. Now Trust Wallet is going to fetch quotes from some third-party service providers. And it'll display the best deal up at the top. Just keep in mind, with these third-party service providers, you will have to create an account with that provider as well as go through KYC. Now these third-party service providers are perfectly fine, but at the time of recording, I find that the fees are not the most competitive. So if you're doing large purchases, you might be better off to use a centralized exchange and then just send the crypto from that exchange into your trust wallet. But this can be a convenient option for smaller amounts. Just always keep an eye on the fees. So right here at the top, I can see that Banksa is offering 144 Tether for my $150 spend. Simply click on the service provider you wish to use. Then you'll be redirected to that third party service provider. So from here, you'll have to provide your email address, your country of residence, and then you'll have to proceed to do the KYC verification. 
After completing verification, you'll need to attach a payment method to the third-party service provider account that you create. From there, you can complete your purchase. Once your purchase is complete through the third-party service provider, the crypto will be sent into your Trust Wallet on the network that you selected. So I'll go ahead and bring Trust Wallet back into frame, and I'll come back here to the home page. And if I proceeded to purchase that Tether, I'd be seeing it right here inside my wallet on the Arbitrum network once that purchase was complete. Also make sure to add the crypto for the network to your Trust Wallet. If you bought some crypto and you had it sent to your wallet and you don't see it right here, just simply come down here, click on Manage Crypto, then search for the crypto that you purchased and add it to your wallet for the network that you made the purchase on. So in my case, that would be Tether for the Arbitrum network. You can see that I already have it toggled to on, but if I didn't, I would just simply click on this button here to toggle it on inside the wallet. Then once you hit the back button here, you'll be able to see your crypto balance inside your wallet after making your purchase. Now I'll show you how to swap one crypto and into another. To get this done, we'd click on swap right here up at the top. If you're using Trust Wallet in the drop down mode, you'd click on the Trust Wallet logo. Then you'd click on swap up at the top. And this will bring you over to a page where you can swap one crypto into another. Next, we need to choose the crypto that we wish to swap. And we can do that by clicking right here. Then choose the crypto as well as the network that you wish to do the swap on in this drop down, or you can search for it in the search bar up above. You can see here that I have some tether on the Arbitrum network, and you can see the Arbitrum logo right beside Tether here. So I'll go ahead and swap some Tether into another crypto on the Arbitrum network. So I'll go ahead and give this option a click. So now I'm ready to swap some Tether on the Arbitrum network into another crypto on the Arbitrum network. So to choose a crypto, I'll click right here. Once again, you can select one from this drop down menu here, or you can search for a crypto in the search bar up above. For this demonstration, I'll go ahead and do Chainlink. And I can see a result right here, Chainlink on the Arbitrum network. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a click. Next, I need to choose how much Tether I wish to swap into Chainlink. You'll be able to see your available balance right here. So you can always type in a custom amount, just like so. Or you could click on Max to swap your entire balance. Then in this box right here, Trust Wallet will be showing you approximately how much of the other crypto you'll be receiving for your swap. If you come down here, you'll be able to see the details of your swap. Now in this case here, you can see that the provider is one inch, which is a decentralized swap aggregator. So Trust Wallet is going to be using one inch to find you the best deal for your swap. Now to save a little bit on fees, you always have the option of going to one inch directly. But you can see in my case here, the fee is only going to be 28 cents worth of chain link to do this swap. So for the convenience of this, 28 cents worth of chain link is no big deal. In the future, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on one inch. When that video is done, I'll be leaving it as a link in the description down below for anyone that might be interested in that. Perhaps I'm already done that video by the time you're watching this video here. Now, if it's your first time swapping a token inside a trust wallet, you'll have to approve it first. And to do that, we'll just simply click right here on approve USDT. Then trust wallet will pop down top right hand side, asking you to give permission to access your USDT. So I'll simply come down here and click on confirm. Then you'll get a notification here. So in my case, it's letting me know that I'm about to give permission to one inch to swap my tether. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here on I understand the risks and continue. Now I've given permission to swap tether into chain link. So to complete this swap, I'm going to come down here and click on swap. Then the wallet will drop down top right hand side where you can review the details of your swap before confirming. And you can see right here that there's an estimated fee of 0.001 Ethereum. And this is the gas fee that I'm going to have to pay out of my Ethereum balance for the Arbitrum network in order to confirm this swap on the blockchain. So there's the small provider fee of 28 cents worth of chain link, and there's the gas fee of 0.001 Ethereum. So remember, you do need the network's native token inside your trust wallet in order to cover the gas fees for doing these swaps. And the gas fee is to confirm the transaction on the blockchain. So that looks perfectly fine to me. I'm going to come down here and click on confirm. And now history is going to come up and you'll be able to see the details of your swap here. So what we'll do from here is we'll come down to the bottom of the screen and we'll click on the home button. And as you can see, I just swapped my USDT into Chainlink on the Arbitrum network. And keep in mind, because this is a decentralized application, 
you can't swap from one network into another, at least at the time of recording. For swapping, you need to match the network. If you're looking to send tokens from one network into another, you need to use a crypto bridge, which is a different process than swapping. So I'll do one more quick demonstration here. To swap, we'll come right over here and click on swap. Then we'll choose the crypto we wish to swap by clicking right here. And this time I'll go ahead and swap that chain link into something else. So I'll type in chain link. You can already see result here. So I'll go ahead and give that a click chain link on the Arbitrum network. Now I'll choose a token that I wish to swap into by clicking right here. And this time I'll go ahead and do USDC, which is another stable coin. So just like so. I can see there's a result for USDC on the Arbitrum network right here. So I'll go ahead and give that a click. Now I'll choose how much of my chain link that I wish to swap. You can always type in a custom amount, but for this demonstration, I'll go ahead and do max. Now I can see approximately how much USDC I'll be receiving for my swap right here. And of course, I need to approve Chainlink for this swap, being that it's the first time that I'm swapping Chainlink into another token. So I'll go ahead and give that a click. The wallet is going to drop down. I'll go ahead and click on confirm. I'm going to click here on I understand the risks. And now I've approved Chainlink to swap into USDC on the one inch platform through Trust Wallet. You can review your provider fee right here and you'll be able to see your gas fee on the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and click on swap. Trust wallet's dropping down again. I can see my estimated gas fee right here, which is going to be not point not 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 one Ethereum. That's perfectly fine with me. So I'm going to come down here and click on confirm. Now we can see that the swap is pending right here and it's done. So we'll go ahead and come down to the bottom of the screen. We'll click on home and you can see that I've swapped my chain link into USDC but we can't see USDC in my wallet just yet because now I need to add that token. So to do that, I'm gonna come down here and click on Manage Crypto. Then I'll go ahead and search for USDC. And now I need to find USDC for the Arbitrum Networks. We'll scroll down, keep scrolling, and I can see it right here. So USDC for the Arbitrum Network. Over here on the right-hand side, I'll click on this button to add it to wallet. Now I'm gonna come over here, click on the back button. And now you can see USDC inside my trust wallet and you can see the amount of USDC I received for my chain link that I just swapped moments ago. Now I'll show you how to connect trust wallet to a decentralized application. I'll do a couple demonstrations. So for the first demonstration, I'll bring an apex protocol. And this is a non KYC decentralized crypto futures trading platform that looks and operates quite similar to a centralized exchange. So if any of you are experienced traders and you'd like to learn more about this, I do have a step-by-step -step beginner tutorial on how to use Apex Protocol. And I'll be sure to leave a link for this video in the description down below for anyone that might be interested. So once you arrive on the homepage of the decentralized application that you wish to use, you're typically looking for a launch DAP button. In this case here, it's called a trade button and normally you'll find it top right hand side of the screen. So what we'll do here is we'll click where it says trade and this launches the decentralized application. Once you launch the decentralized application that you wish to use, you'll now need to connect trust wallet. Usually you'll find a connect wallet button up at the top right hand side of the screen. Now in a lot of cases, decentralized applications support many different networks, but usually you have to use the Ethereum mainnet when connecting your wallet to the platform. So if your trust wallet isn't set to the Ethereum mainnet, and you were to click on connect wallet, the decentralized application will send a request to your wallet to change the network, which has no cost associated with it. So you'd simply click on confirm if that request got sent to your wallet. Alternatively, you can just make sure that your trust wallet is already set to the Ethereum mainnet when connecting to the decentralized application. Once you're connected to the DAP, you can always switch the network from there. So to get that done, we would just click on the trust wallet icon right here. And as you can see, I already have my wallet set to the Ethereum mainnet. But if yours isn't, just click on this icon, scroll down, and then click on Ethereum. Once you're ready to connect your wallet, just simply click on Connect Wallet. In this case here, I'm getting a pop-up window where I can select Trust Wallet right here. Sometimes you'll get a drop-down window. Either way, just select Trust Wallet by giving it a click. Now in this case here, Apex Protocol is asking me if I want it to remember my wallet. Only use an option like this if you trust the device that you're using. My device is a secure device, but typically I just opt out of these things anyways, so I'm just gonna click this toggle switch to off. Now I'm ready to send a request to the Trust Wallet to connect it to Apex Protocol. And to do that, we'll click right here on Send Requests. 
Then Trust Wallet is going to drop down, top right hand side, for a signature request. So just simply come down here and click on Confirm. Now my Trust Wallet is connected to Apex Protocol. And usually you'll be able to see your wallet address displayed at the top right hand side of the screen of the dApp that you're connected to. Mine's behind a little black box, but you can see the Trust Wallet icon right here. If the decentralized application you're using supports multiple different networks, usually you'll see a network icon somewhere near the top right as well. So if I click on this, you can see all the different networks that Apex Protocol supports. If I wanted to use a different network than Ethereum, I can always choose a different network from this drop down menu. I have some assets on Arbitrum 1, so I'll just come down here and click on Arbitrum 1. Now Trust Wallet's dropping down, asking me if I wish to switch the network to Arbitrum. So I'm just going to come down here and click on Switch. Now when we come back up here, you can see that I'm now on the Arbitrum network while using this application. So if I wanted to deposit some funds onto this platform, I would just come down here and click on Deposit. And then in this window right here, I can proceed to transfer some assets from the Trust Wallet onto the decentralized exchange, and then I could begin to trade. But as I mentioned, I have separate videos on how to get this done, if you're interested in this platform, and I'll leave a link for those videos in the description down below for anyone that might be interested. For now, this goes a little bit outside the scope of this video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close this out. Now, whenever you're done using a decentralized application, it's always a good idea to disconnect your wallet. And to do that, you just come up to the top right hand side of the screen and click on your wallet address. Then in the drop down menu, you'd come down here and click on disconnect. And as you can see, I just disconnected Trust Wallet from Apex Protocol. Now I'll do one more quick demonstration. And this time I'll do one inch network and I'll quickly bring it into frame. And one inch is a swap aggregator. So when swapping crypto on this platform, one inch scans all the various different swaps and presents you with the best deal for your swap at the time of making your swap. And as you'll remember earlier in this tutorial, this is the platform that Trust Wallet was using. So now that we're on the home page of one inch, we'll simply click right here on launch dApp or just use launch dApp top right hand side of the screen. Now I've launched the decentralized application. Of course, to connect the wallet, we can click right here and connect wallet, but you'll also normally find connect wallet top right hand side of the screen here. So we'll go ahead and give that a click. Once again, we're getting a pop-up window here where we can select our trust wallet. Now you'll see two options here, Trust Wallet or Trust Wallet Extension. So because I'm using Trust Wallet as an extension from my browser, I'll be choosing this option right here. Then Trust Wallet's going to drop down top right hand side of the screen, asking me if I want to switch to the Ethereum mainnet. Remember, you normally have to connect to decentralized applications using the Ethereum mainnet. I was using the Arbitrum network when I was on Apex Protocol, so now I'm getting a request to switch to the Ethereum mainnet in order to connect. And this comes at no cost. So I'm just going to go ahead and click right here on switch. And then I'm going to click on connect. Now I've connected my trust wallet to one inch. And once again, we can see the trust wallet is connected because my address is displayed now top right hand side of the screen. Of course, mine's behind a little black box, but you can see the trust wallet icon right here. Once again, if the decentralized application supports different networks, you'll usually find a network button right here somewhere near the top right hand side of your screen. So in my case where it says Ethereum. If you want to use a different network, just give that a click. Then choose one of the supported networks in the drop down menu below. My assets are on the Arbitrum network, so I'll go ahead and click on that. Trust Wallet's going to drop down, asking if I wish to switch the network, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on switch. Now I'm connected to one inch on the Arbitrum network. And you can see in this box right here that one inch is now detecting my Ethereum balance right here. So if I want to swap some of my Ethereum into another crypto, I could come down here, select a token, then choose it from this drop down menu right here, or I can search for it in the search bar. I'll just go ahead and do tether. Now I can choose how much of my Ethereum balance I wish to swap. So I can do something like this. And I can see down below how much USDT I'll be receiving for my swap. Then if I wanted to proceed with this swap, I'd come down here and click on swap, which would go to the next step of this process. Now I'm making a separate tutorial on how to use one inch. And I'll be leaving a link to that video in the description down below when I'm done making that video. In this tutorial, I simply want to demonstrate how to connect your wallet to a decentralized application as well as disconnect it. Otherwise, this video is going to drag on forever. So whenever you're done using the decentralized application, remember it's always a good idea to disconnect your wallet from the platform. And to do that, we'll come up here top right hand side, click on your wallet address. In this case here, I'm getting a pop-up window and I can see the disconnect button right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on disconnect. Now, if I close this out, you can see that my wallet is now disconnected from this decentralized application. 
So if anyone's interested in learning how to use one inch, I am making a video for this. When it's done, it'll be in the description down below for anyone that might find that helpful. But that's how you can connect your wallet as well as disconnect your wallet to decentralized applications. And here's how to send crypto out of Trust Wallet. And I'll keep this nice and simple and I'll send some crypto from Trust Wallet over to Coinbase. So I'll quickly bring Coinbase into frame. Now that I'm on Coinbase, I need to come up here, top right hand side of the screen and click where it says send and receive. On a lot of other exchanges like Binance, you're looking for a deposit button. On Kraken, you're looking for a transfer button. Either way, you wanna find the crypto deposit button for the crypto that you wish to receive from your Trust Wallet. In this drop down window here, I'm going to click here where it says receive. Now I need to choose the crypto that I wish to receive on Coinbase from my Trust Wallet. Now I know that I have a little bit of Ethereum inside my Trust Wallet, so I'll demonstrate with that. So I need to click right here where it says Cardano, and then I need to select Ethereum, so I'll search for it in the search bar. I can see a result right here, so I'll go ahead and give that a click. And now I need to choose the network that I wish to receive the Ethereum over. So I'll quickly come up here and click on the Trust Wallet icon. And you can see in my case here that I have an Ethereum balance on the Arbitrum 1 network. But you can see down here that I also added Ethereum for the Ethereum mainnet. Now in this particular situation, I don't have a balance stored inside a Trust Wallet on the Ethereum mainnet. So obviously I'll be selecting my Arbitrum 1 balance. But in the event that you have a balance for the same token, but on different networks, just make sure that you select the network with the token balance that you wish to send. So in my case here, I'll be sending Ethereum out of my Arbitrum 1 balance inside of my Trust Wallet. So I'm going to quickly come back over here to the Coinbase deposit form. So what I need to do here is come up where it says network, give that a click, and I need to select the Arbitrum network right here. Remember, it's very important to make sure the network matches on both sides of this. You don't want to send from one network and into another, as that can result in a permanent loss of your crypto. So in my case here, I'm going to be sending my Ethereum from my Arbitrum 1 balance inside a Trust Wallet. So I need to make sure that I've selected the Arbitrum network right here. So this is looking good. Next, I need to copy my Ethereum deposit address for the Arbitrum 1 network. And I can see my address right down here, just behind this black box. To copy it, I'm going to click on these two little boxes right here. Now I'll come back up here to the Trust Wallet icon, give it a click. And now I'm going to click on my Ethereum balance for the Arbitrum 1 network. Then I'm going to click right here where it says send. Now I'm going to paste in my Coinbase deposit address for Ethereum on the Arbitrum 1 network, just like so. Now I'm ready to choose the amount of Ethereum that I wish to send from Trust Wallet and over to Coinbase. And you'll be able to see your available balance right here. So you'll know exactly what you're working with. So you can always type in a custom amount into this box right here, or you can click on max to send your entire balance. Now remember, you're going to have to pay gas out of the native token for the network that you're sending from out of Trust Wallet. Remember that there's a fee to confirm this transaction on the blockchain, and that's always paid out of the native token for that network. So for the Arbitrum 1 network, the native token is Ethereum. So I'm going to be paying a gas fee out of my Ethereum balance on the Arbitrum network to send this Ethereum from Trust Wallet over to Coinbase. So whatever network that you're using, just make sure that you have some of that network's native token inside your Trust Wallet to cover the gas fee for these transactions. If you were using the Binance chain, the native token would be BNB. If you're using Optimism, Ethereum would be the native token. But you can always do a quick Google search to find out what the native token is for the network that you wish to use. So in this case here, I'll just go ahead and do something like this. Now I'm ready to send 0.01 Ethereum from Trust Wallet over to Coinbase. So I'm gonna come down here and click on Preview. Now I can preview this transaction. And I can see my estimated network fee right here. So this is the gas fee that I'm going to pay out of my Ethereum balance to send this over to Coinbase. And this is a very small fee, so it looks perfectly fine to me. So I'm just gonna come down here and click on Confirm. Now the transaction is pending, and the Ethereum has just been sent from Trust Wallet over to Coinbase. So now I need to simply wait for the blockchain to confirm this transaction, and my Ethereum will be deposited into my Coinbase account over the Arbitrum 1 network. So I'll go ahead and just close this out. And I'll quickly bring Trust Wallet back into full screen here. 
And if we come over to my Ethereum balance right here, you can see that my Ethereum balance has been reduced and soon that Ethereum will arrive in my Coinbase account. And of course, always send a smaller amount first. When the smaller amount arrives where you intend, then you can have the confidence to send in larger amounts. And always keep in mind that you need some of the network's native token to cover the gas fee when sending tokens out of your trust wallet. So if I was sending any of this USDC from my trust wallet over to Coinbase using the Arbitrum One network, I'd have to pay the gas fee for that out of my Ethereum balance stored inside trust wallet on the Arbitrum One network. If I was using a different network altogether, I would need that network's native token to cover the gas fee to get this done. And there you have it, your introduction to using Trust Wallet as an extension on your browser. If you got some value out of that, don't forget to leave me a like and hit subscribe for future content. Also feel free to check out some other Trust Wallet tutorials, which I'm putting together in a playlist on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for coming by and checking out this video. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. And until I do, have yourself a powerful day.